Hello again. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, so we are at it again, and we're going to have another discussion on the Africa Action Series. I have my incredible uh, panelists here who have been making contributions to the history of Africa. Today, we're going to be talking about identity. So uh, just this morning, uh, a, a, a fellow who was a Kurdish, a Kurdish indigent was interviewed by the BBC. And one of the items, one of the issues that was raised about that uh, in that interview was in the 70s, there was an attempt by the Saddam Hussein regime to kind of like suppress the identity of that tribe. And he tried to pull through it all through his singing and his maintenance of his identity as a Kurd. I also saw a post on LinkedIn yesterday uh, regarding the downturn of the Naira. And somebody posted that, look, the insatiable appetite of Nigerians for things made abroad is contributory to that kind of downfall. And Reina, who is with us today, posted uh, on his line that 99% of his DNA is actually East African. And that was profound. So the subject of identity is, is, is a universal concept. Even though we're focusing on Africa in this series, it's universal everyone needs to be able to be proud of where they come from and what their contribution is to the world. So today I'm going to be speaking to um, a, a big panel of, of, um, of intellectuals, professionals, business people who are going to speak well to this um, topic. I'm just going to do a brief introduction before we proceed and then uh, we, we take a message on that. All right, yeah. So welcome, welcome everyone who is joining us in the stream now. Welcome Nanaya, welcome Shadrach, it's great to see you today. Thank you so much for joining in. I'm adding and back. And thank you for those who have joined in early from our various uh, platforms. Please let us know where you're joining in from in the comments. Thank you, Henry Nduka. Uh, yes, thank you for joining us online. It will be great to have you in here too. All right, so I'm just going to share my screen and do a bit of an introduction right away. Okay. So today we're going to be speaking with Ronke Babajide. She's a PhD and she is a senior systems engineer with VMware, currently working with VMware. She has 20 years of computer. Computer, computer industry experience, and she's going to be bringing her intellectual capacity to bear in this conversation today. I want to highlight that she's a woman mentor, a mentor at Woman Mentor, and the pioneer of Women in Technology podcast. We're also going to have Ijoma Okandu, who is a 18 and young adult mentor. One of the things we wanted to bring her in this talk, this time children grow up. Uh, she's uh, very much involved in speaking, in leadership, in volunteering. She volunteers with Kala Durutoye, and she's a John Maxwell certified coach. We're also going to have Reina Togel, regular um, European, German, actively involved in Africa. She's a, he's a, a farmer, and he's the pioneer of AgroFels Consult. And he has a lot of experience in this area and a lot of things to say about what we can do as Africans to advance in our journey. I'm going, also going to have Faith Morbia, who is the president and founder of Youth Up Global, uh, a, 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 an organization focused on giving the youth a voice in the nations of the world. He's also the chief CEO of Studel Limited, uh, an ed, ed tech, ed, ed tech um, company, which he, he, he pioneers, he runs. I'm also going to be talking to the blockchain baron of Africa, Shadrach Kubiani. And it's an honor always to have these crop of people available here. He is the pioneer of current blockchain, and he's very much concerned about balance of trade for African countries and how we can use blockchain to bring transparency to Africa's involvement in global trade. So uh, wherever you are, I'd like you to just give a big shout out um, to give a big shout out to the this panel that 
I have introduced today. I want to just give a big shout out, give a hand, a clap of hands. And, and I mean, I've said sorry much. Um, we would like to have a way to clap when we are in these sessions. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, so we're going to start the discussion. <laughs> Tell us about one of the things that we are involved in today. All right, just one minute. Okay. Okay, so thank you for that one break. That gave me the opportunity to get, take a breather. And once again, thank you for those who are joining. I'm going to read a few times. I just want to acknowledge you, Seth. Thank you for Chidi Ukandu is here. Chidi Ukandu is, I, I don't know when I'm supposed to reveal that secret, but he, she is Ijoma's husband. And thank you for supporting your wife today. And um, Katung, a regular, is with us today. Henry Duka is here. Uh, Ike Chuku is here as well. Uh, Tell your friends we're doing this. It's an, going to be an interesting conversation. We're going to start from uh, Ms., uh, Mrs. Uh, Dr. Ronke Babajide. We're going to start from Dr. Ronke Babajide today. I'm featuring her, an amazing woman who has been supportive to us. We're going to start the conversation with the definition of identity. What does identity mean? Why is it important? And why is it important to Africans to embrace, promote, and advertise our identity as a people. So let's hear from you, Ronge. Thank you, Kenneth. Thank you for inviting me once more to your interesting discussion panels. And um, since we, we organized this round of discussion, I've been thinking about the question of identity. And what I would like to say is that um, there's so many different types of identity, really. So there's one is your personal identity, which is more like your character, is the things you like, um, it's maybe where you live, what kind of job you're doing. When you were introducing us, you were already talking about our identity in some form. But then there are other forms of identity as well. It's like, uh, for example, there's your social identity, which is part of your, um, maybe your, your position in your family, you're a daughter, maybe you're a mother, you're a sister. So this is also some form of identity that defines you. And then there's uh, your professional identity. When I'm at work, I'm a different person than when I'm in my personal life. And, and um, there's so many different aspects of identity. But I think what we are going to be talking about today is uh, cultural identity and the question um, how our, um, the, maybe the place we were born, the traditions that come with it, um, the societal structure of the place we are born, how that forms our identity. So identity is very hard to define. I actually went and read a couple of papers on the whole question and, and there is uh, no simple, simple answer to what identity is. But I think what we'll be focusing on today is probably our cultural identity uh, as Africans um, or I can't even say I have a cultural identity as an African because that would be wrong because um, obviously I'm of mixed cultures. My mother is Austrian, my father is Nigeria, but there is some aspect of African identity in me since I grew up in Nigeria and there's some, some parts of that uh, will always stay with me. So I, I, it will be interesting to hear what other, what all of you will be saying around this this whole topic of what your identity is. Thank you very much, Ronke. Thank you. That's beautiful. And I always liked, I, I actually was looking forward to hear that thought from you because you had shared it <laughs> privately with me, that Africa is 54 nations, probably 3,000 <laughs> languages. What do you mean by an African identity? So let's hear uh, from Reina. What do you think identity means? Is it important to project our identity? Oh, thank you very much that, that I can be a part of this discussion. So, as uh, Ronke says, it's very difficult to say what is identity. And I hope today we can discuss what is the, the identity mainly of the South Sahara African people. And I think we have to put it 
closer to the to the normal people and what they are thinking and how they are acting. So we cannot say, as you said, um, we cannot say African people has a has a special identity. You will say in Kenya it's different to Senegal and Morocco is different to Egypt and so. But what I feel is that uh, it's a part of the identity of these people, especially in South Sahara Africa. It's it's um, they are a little bit lost. I feel it. They are a little bit lost to the position in the world, and I hope we can find today uh, the, a clear picture. What can be the, these African people as identity to give it to the world? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I like that, and it reminds me of the post you made earlier. If you don't know where you're coming from, you won't know where you're going. Thank you, Nana Sewa, for joining us. So let's hear from Faith. What do we mean by identity? Okay. Um, thank you very much, um, Ken. Uh, what do we yeah, mean Kenneth, by identity? For having me. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Kenneth, for having me in this discussion, an important discussion that we are discussing Africa, um, a beautiful continent. Um, in fact, um, a continent I'm so glad that I'm part of. All right, so uh, let me build up from uh, let me build up from what Ronke and Werner said. It would be very difficult for us to say. Um, African identity is A, B, C, and then that is just it, I walk away. No. <laughs> um, African identity goes beyond just that, because just as you did mention, 54 nations and over 3,000 um, uh, languages have spread across. So you, you begin to ask yourself, how do you, how do you sum all that together and, and give a single um, definition of identity? But then, even though we, we may have that um, as, as something to, um, to try to understand, we must also try to place, for, this, for the course of this discussion, what um, builds up an identity. I, I love what Runke said. She, she, she did mention that you have, she tried to categorize identity and then place them as um, social identity, um, uh, uh, she also mentioned about cultural identity, and I think she also talked about professional, professional identity. identity. Yes, yeah, so so she mentioned those three, and then and then generally she also where she was talking about personal identity. While well, she said, as you introduce us, that is also our identity, but there is also something. There is identity that you think you have, and there is identity that others have about you. Okay. Um, identity that you think you have, and identity that others have about you. Because what I've discovered is that this whole thing runs on perception. So, um, and then just as Rena said, it's as if we have lost it and we're trying to find it. And he tried to regionalize identity, placing West Africa, maybe East Africa, Sub Saharan Africa. But then we may say that Africa is beautiful. Africa is awesome. We have lovely cultural values, identities, beliefs, you know, art, things that are identified that, okay, this is African. But then how has it been perceived is another identity. And that is what we are battling with. And that is why these discussions are important so that we can, we can change the narrative and ensure that how we see ourselves is also how the world out there sees us. It, it is important that we need to balance these two so that we would be we, we will know that the identity that we have for ourselves okay equates how the world interprets us to be so it's as if that is where uh, Morena asked um, raised the point that that we, we are yet to discover what actually is African identity because at the end of the day um, what I believe I have as my values and my beliefs and I have not projected it enough <laughs> to be seen by the by the outside world that are given me definition. So if you if I ask if I ask an European what what is an African identity, it, it may be different from how I see myself. So this also goes with branding, personal branding, and all that. So if you want to move to the business um, palace, you could use branding 
as exchange to identity. So we must also brand ourselves, individual, how we see ourselves and how um, outside world sees us. So it's important as we go in, in this our discussion to capture that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Faith. And you just reminded me of Miles Monroe. And he said, there is a difference between your reputation and your um, character. So who you are Perfect. and who people see Perfect. you to be. Perfect. And that is a Perfect. beautiful Perfect. thing. So, and, and both Perfect. are important. They have their importance yeah, sure. uh, in, in, in that essence. And I thank you for that. So I'm going to, we're going to listen to Mr. Shadrach Kubiani, identity. Let's hear the voice. Uh, thank you kindly. And uh, much, much gratitude uh, for having me on board. I must also admit something to, the, to our external audiences that they may not be aware. I am as equally a learner as I am a speaker. That's why I always bring pen and paper. I soak in so much from my learned colleagues whenever we have these, uh, I'll call them balcony sessions where we see further. We look at the horizon together. So I'm incredibly grateful for the insights from our, from our peers on board. Really, really grateful. Identity, you know, in keeping or in sync with uh, what the forerunners have already gone ahead to touch on, there seems to be a prism effect, prism, whereby identity is something that we have to consider it from various perspectives and just look at it from various angles. I'll, I'll put forward three. Column number one is uh, beliefs, and the middle column is your personality. Last, but perhaps most critical, is the culture. You know, it's interesting that we've got Reina in the room, who is known for his agricultural uh, exploits and his, his agricultural pursuit, uh, rather. Because the word culture is known to come from the 16th century, uh, from firstly from Latin, and where it, it, it firstly re re referred to the cultivation of a piece of land. Very interesting because as Africans, we have to ask ourselves the environment around us. What are we cultivating? What are we nurturing? You know, our children and our peers will soak in more of who we are more than what we say, because that is what sticks. So very, very critical as we look at the different angles of the prism on, on, on African identity, those three pillars, personality, beliefs, or what we believe about ourselves and culture. Let me close off the point with this. We see the world as we are, not as it is. We see the world as we are, not as it is. Thank you kindly. Thank you very much, Shadrach. We see the world as we are, not as it is. We were as grasshoppers in their eyes, in our own eyes, and so were we in their eyes. That is and a that is quote it. from- And, that is from how, the and that's how it happened, yeah. <laughs> All right. And I like that, our, our culture, our beliefs, and our, the, the last one was- Our personality. 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 Thank you very much for that, beautiful. Those who are joining us are joining us from all over the world, Dubai, Ghana, Nigeria, Lagos, and so on and so forth. Thank you for that. If you have a question, just drop it in. And I like particularly a comment from Ibrahim Salifu. We need to talk more about static identities and cinetic identity. Those words, these are my first time seeing the second one. So I, I hope somebody knows what that is in this call. Thank you so much. So we're going to be listening I've, to- I've, 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 I've asked Mr. Ogo. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. So we're going to listen to Ijoma Okandu. What is identity? And I'd like us to tilt a little also more towards, is there a need to um, embrace, promote, and really um, advertise our identity as Africans? Please go ahead, man. Uh, we need your sound, please. All right. I'm sure you can hear me now very clearly. Precisely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Kenneth, for this amazing opportunity to talk about something I am truly, truly passionate about. African identity, identity as a whole, culture, and everything that surrounds it. I like to start this way, that it is important that we understand that there is a reason why we are planted in a place. Hmm. It is very important that we understand as humans, wherever you're from, European, African, American, Asian, 
whatever, it is important that every individual understands that there is a reason why they are planted in a particular place, why their hair is, is in a particular texture, why their skin is, is the way it is, exactly, why they wear certain kind of kind, kinds of clothing, why they are just the way they are. We have defined identity and it is so important to still reiterate the point that from a psychological point of view, identity is your, they are your qualities and they're important. They are your beliefs. They are your values. They are your cultural perspectives. They are, it's just the way you see the world. It is your social construction. It is your personality. It is your looks. I want to add that aspect because we haven't really touched on that. Your identity is your look. It is what, what makes you a person your expressions, how you understand the world that you are in. And I am always thankful for the fact that each and every one that is planted in a particular place with a particular skin color, with a particular hair texture, there is a purpose and a reason for that. And when we sit down to understand that there are some things that will just go away from us, our eyes will be open, scales will fall off our eyes and we begin to embrace everyone and understand that there is a reason why we are diverse and diversity is king. It is beautiful. It is encompassing. It is a, it's something we should embrace. Can you say something about why is it important? I don't even know where to start about mm -hmm. emphasizing why it is important for us to embrace our culture as Africans. You know, Reina said something about how we have not really taken our place. And yes, rightfully so. The thing is, it is the way we project ourselves that the world will take us. It is how we present ourselves that the world will take us. It is how we see ourselves that the world will take us. You're not confident. Another person will not take you as a confident person. Simple. There, let me start this way. For example, I have one day I was sharing with Kenneth just before this thing. And I love to tell stories and I love to connect things together because I feel like it, it, brings, it brings out the topic and everything all the more for us to understand. I was telling him that one day I sat down and asked myself, I mean, this is no judgment to anyone, whatever you prefer. And I asked myself, okay, so why, do I, why am I wearing what I'm wearing? Why should, I wear, why should I wear a suit in a hot environment? I don't understand. Why? <laughs> why? Why should I put a suit in a hot environment? Why should I wear something? Yeah, why should I wear something so long? Which is all right and beautiful because I mean, the creator of the universe and humanity, so he, he is very creative. He knows what he's doing. And he knows why he placed each one with the way they are. It is for your protection. It is for your own good. If you're wearing African prints in the hot environment, you discover that air passes through your system very quickly because these clothes, this fabric, they're very, they're very light. And then you put on a suit in an office, you're looking pink, and then with an AC. How? How does that even work? Who handed these things to us? Why are we embracing it? Why do we think it's right? Why do we think that that is how to, how to do things? Oh, I, no I like the way everyone is looking. Uh -uh, thank you so much. You guys are making me feel very comfortable. <laughs> See, what, what is happening? No, no, calm, be calming down. And then your hair. And you're like, I, I asked myself, why, why, why? It wasn't, it wasn't anything religious. It wasn't anything. I just had an epiphany. And I told myself, this has to stop. Somebody has to project our own things. Why should I buy Italian-made shoes and make myself feel that that is what makes me a human being? Like, that is what makes me feel fulfilled. Identity is very important. The thing about identity is that if you don't realize who you are, your creative capacity and potential will not be explored optimally. That is it. Because you're always thinking that you're second, you're second best. Your ideas are not mm. prince, as in your, your ideas are not super. Yeah, you always think that the other person is better than yourself. No. Your skin color is perfect. I mean, I wear my hair like this and I come out and some of my British friends, they're like, wow, IJ, you look amazing. They love to touch it. My daughter's hair as well is natural. I make it for her the way my, my mothers and grandmothers did it those days. It's called threading. Culture is big. We have a lot to offer the world as Africans. I don't even want to go so far now. Maybe we'll come to that. Our arts, our fabric, our food, how can we go to hotels and we are talking about intercontinental dishes and what we accept all the time is something that we are not familiar with. 
Why can't we project our jollof rice, our all of those kind of major meals in different African countries? And by the way, I love to correct this all the time. We have said it here, but I want to reiterate that point. Africa is not a country. Africa, I repeat, is not a country. <laughs> Please. Thank you for that. Yes, I want to make it very loud. Like Africa is not a country. Africa is a continent with 54 countries, 48 within the land areas, and six of them are islands. And the earlier we understand that, the better. In some of the areas, they speak English as their accepted um, language, but it does not mean that they don't have other languages that they speak there. And this idea of, Ken, please let me just quickly touch on this because I don't know if I will have the time to touch on it. Let me just do that and use yeah. that and summarize. Your accent is okay as an African person. I have never seen, an, my husband works with Italian people. I've never heard any <laughs> Italian person speak speak with in um, with um, British accent, no. You will hear them speak there, okay, Sotaranto, please come, uh, what are you doing, all right, let us do these things. That is how they talk. And it's okay, so long as you are articulate enough and you can pronounce your words clearly, you are all right. I was in a forum and a mother was saying that she put her daughter in a school, an African mother put her daughter in a school, and that the daughter was speaking British English, um, accent, and it was, she loved it. And then all of a sudden she changed the school because she wanted her to improve in her academics. And now her academics are improving. And she's feeling sorry that the daughter has lost her British accent. And I'm like, excuse me, please. What are we talking about? This is how we create issues for the children. And then they grow up not knowing who they are and where they are and whatever it is they are of. We must make sure that we realize that our language, our intonation, our clothing, our faces, our skin color, everything that embodies us is perfect, just the way the creator of the universe wanted it. Thank you very much, Ken. Let me start. Thank you very much, Ijoma. Thank you so much. I think Ijoma Kande has entered into uncharted regions, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I really absolutely love that. And, and I love the fact that she has brought out the point of diversity and the fact that we yeah. can be who we are and allow others to be who they are. There is no inferiority yeah. about it, and it is okay. Everybody can be who they are. And we want to use that point to enter into another area, and I would like to just, um, just shift the camera, so to speak, to Mr. Togel, Mr. Rina Togel, about complex. Should I feel inferior to other civilizations? What is the cause of inferiority? Is there any reason to feel inferior to other civilizations? And particularly some of us who are Africans here are living in countries that are not our own. Do we have any reason to feel inferior? What, is the, what, what, what are the mechanisms that are you know, responsible for creating such inferiority? And what can we do about it? Mr. Togel. OK, thank you very much. Uh, I hope my English is good enough to explain <laughs> my, okay. my thinking. So okay. first of all, I will tell you a story, or not a story, um, what I have felt before I come to Africa. And we have also in, in our area some people uh, from Africa, mainly refugees, and they are, I can say, they are not there as Africans. They don't use the, the clothes from Africa. They are not authentic, means mainly the young men, they are here, they, um, the behavior and what they are, uh, looks like, it's more uh, a gangster from uh, West LA. So, and this is what was, was my thinking about how it runs in Africa. Hmm. It's, it, okay. sounds a, it sounds a little bit uh, crazy and maybe um, it's wrong, but these, was my image of African people before I come to Africa. Means these guys representing in our community Africa. So, and this is a very, very worse situation. Means they are refugees, they come here, they, uh, they have seen a lot of strange things, they have done uh, a travel over two years. And on this way is my feeling they lost something, the African roots. And it makes for me, as a German, I'm also a refugee. 
makes for me no sense that I go as a South Manhattan or I don't know, uh, West LA gangster and run around with uh, base cap and you know what I mean. So it's more like MTV uh, images of uh, black people. So this is what I want to say about how is the, the picture in uh, rural areas about Africans. Mm -hmm. This is not, this is not the truth, but this is like it shows. So mm -hmm. this is the, the first thing. The second thing, what, what you are asking for is, what is the difference between different areas, cultures, something like that. And as I told you uh, two days ago, it's, I have spoken with a, with a genetic scientist and he told me what is the, the, the roots of the humans and where we are coming from. And he told me a very important point. And he say, your genetic DNA is 99.9% .9 similar to a guy from Kenya. And this is, I has, I, I, know, I know it a little bit. I was thinking, okay, 85%, something like that, but we are different, blah, blah, blah. No, he says, you are out of the, of the color and some special uh, things you can see. We, you are similar. And this opens me, my mind to say, okay, then it's no reason from the hardware side that Africans cannot be successful. So it's have to be other points, traditions, thinking, uh, things around, they are maybe different. And these are the, the, um, the impact is so big that they over, they covered the, 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 the potential of uh, the genetic. I would not go in this uh, ration things, genetic things, but this I think is very important for some Africans to say, okay, we are black, we are not so important, we are maybe uh, more stupid and we are not these uh, nice white guys, they know everything, blah, blah, blah. It's not true. We are the same. And all the other things are not given by God. It's done by humans. And the structure of the, the life in Africa and all the other things um, and the result of this situation is not coming from genetic. So this is a very important point. I think more for you as for me. It means you you cannot, it's also not an excuse, excuse anymore. Yeah, it's, it has two sides. First of all, yeah, okay, you can feel proud like me, and I can say 99% of me is coming from Africa. So, and uh, on the other side, you cannot say anymore, okay, we are black, we are coming from Africa, we are not so developed as the European guys, blah, blah, blah. It's not true. So, and this is, um, is a very important point, I think. Maybe I, I feel that somebody will uh, call me and say you are a crazy guy, but uh, that's the <laughs> truth. Yeah, yeah. Speci especially from Northern Europe. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so on the end, the main difference is, and it's based on the, um, the um, what the situation are in in this camp, uh, continent is that the main difference in thinking is that we as Europeans and as especially as Germans, we do long term thinking means we are not talking about one week, two weeks. We are not thinking about to five years, we, we're thinking about generations, especially in agriculture, it's always a generation business. So you, this is the main difference. So, and, and we have done, we as Europeans have done the rules. Yeah, you can say we have created the rules how the economy and everything's run in the world. And this was a result of long term thinking. And sometimes I be a little surprised that things for me are, as a farmer, it's very normal. I will never work a field. It's not in my ownership. And my hope is that my son or my daughter will take this land and he will go on with, maybe not with agriculture, but with the ownership. 
Yes. And I know that maybe you know a little bit about the German history. Uh, to start the, the World War II, the, 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 the situation was they promised the people in Germany, the poor people in Germany, when you go to war against Russia, the result will be that you get a own piece of land. And mm -hmm. I, I was always saying, okay, African people, they don't care about land ownership or ownership as, uh, as, a, as a value. So, and the European guys, they kill for that. So, and this is uh, a main difference between uh, the thinking of a European and of uh, African people. We always thinking about minimum one generations. And this is what has to change in Africa to create a, a structure and a thinking to say, okay, it's for me better. I have more tomorrow $5 in the pocket. And I say tomorrow five dollar in the pocket is nothing. You have to think to get five thousand dollars in the pocket maybe in two months. But this is the main difference. What I feel. Maybe I'm wrong, but this is what I see from outside. Thank you very much, Mr. Togel. Thank you, Reina. That's absolutely lovely, and I like that allusion to long-term thinking, to transgenerational thinking, and it's a habit we just have to develop as we go along. So let's hear from Dr. Ronke Babajide about this inferiority complex. Are we inferior to other civilizations? Do we have a reason to feel inferior? What can we do about this? Uh, before I start it? saying anything about uh, the question, which I obviously feel we don't, but um, I want to, Anna said, uh, people might think he's wrong. And I actually think he's wrong because I can't agree with a single point he has made. It starts with the whole story about the refugees who are not authentic because they are not wearing African clothes. I mean, is there is there a law somewhere that you can only be African when you're <laughs> wearing African clothes? I mean, wh where where does it start? When I'm an African and I walk in the streets of Europe, will I be have? Do I have to wear my traditional gear? Is it um, like, for example, the German young people, are they wearing lederhosen on the street or are they also dressing like um, American gangsters? So the whole story, I mean, yes, I know you were trying to make a story, Raina, about the way black people might be perceived in the countryside. But I think you have to take a look at the narrative you are projecting here. Because what you're basically saying is that if you're an African living somewhere in the countryside in Germany, it is your duty to walk around um, projecting African traditional values and wearing traditional clothes so that the German people who are obviously not capable of um, educating themselves have a better idea of what an African is. But that is not, I mean, it's not my role to educate you on what I am. I am a human being, and if I um, if I choose to wear like uh, I don't know gangster clothes, which I don't, but I can understand that some young people would want that, then that's fine. It has nothing to do with whether you're authentic or you're African or whatever. You're a young person in this world. Okay, that is the first thing around the refugees, which I found a bit um, disquieting because you are putting different. Um, how can I say, measures and young people from your culture and young people from another culture, mm -hmm. because this year, these are just young people who are trying to build a life for themselves. And there's one book I would actually recommend you would read. It's, and I'm going to say it in German because it's actually a German book written by a German woman. It's called Gehen ging gegangen. And I would recommend that you read this book because it, it actually touches on this subject of young refugees or even older, um, refugees coming to, to Europe and how their lives change, what their life is like. Just take a look at that. And then maybe we come back to talking about refugees in this context of African identity and the need to feel inferior. And then there's the, the, the last topic around um, the generational thinking. So at what point uh, did we start feeling that Africans are not thinking about the next generation? This is a society, the West African societies I know are very generational. There's a very strong uh, bond between the generations. And before we came into this position that the traditional structures were destroyed by these long thinking Europeans, um, they were also <laughs> down the same, their same field. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, how can you come here and tell us that it is the difference between Africans and 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 um, Europeans is that your Europeans are all? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting very agitated about this because the whole I'm going to on the whole narrative. Yes, no, this is no. what is. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is this is what is happening all over the world. People are coming and telling us. I mean, also the whole story about the genetics. Okay, I'm coming up because the whole story is about the genetics. I've never ever found an African who thought that he was genetically inferior to a European. The only people who think that Africans are maybe genetically inferior are Europeans and maybe Americans. So this is not something you have to tell us that we are not uh, inferior to, to you. And it doesn't even matter how many percent of my DNA is the same as yours. I feel that I don't care if my, my DNA is, I don't know, 99% the same as with an Asian person or with a white person. I'm a human being and that is enough. That is enough to give me value. I don't think we have to start a discussion about whether someone has the same amount of DNA. And I probably, I assume that Rainer didn't even mean to make this sound derogatory, but it does sound derogatory when you tell, when you talk about the fact that we have to understand we are the same value just because you re recently realized that we have the same amount of DNA. This is not relevant. So coming back to your question, Kenneth, um, Obviously, I don't feel that anyone is inferior to anyone else. I do agree that people are being made to feel inferior, and it's exactly by this kind of narratives. You're telling people that they, um, that for some reason their traditional values are not as good as European values, that the way they are structuring their lives is maybe not as good because another culture which had better weapons came by and, and suppressed your culture and destroyed your traditional structures. And of course, I am also of the opinion that now after maybe 60, 70, 80 years, we have to start looking forward and not talk as much yeah, about the yeah. damage that was done by the Europeans. Mm -hmm. But I still feel we have to acknowledge that the fact that these things happen still have an effect and are the reasons why we are not as developed maybe in Africa maybe as we would like to be. And it has nothing to do with our genes, our traditions, or our culture, because our culture and our tradition and everything is fine. It is just that we have a legacy of a destroyed continent, destroyed by the same people who are now telling us we should pick ourselves up and move forward. And then they are still using our products at a price that is not, um, how can I say, fair? They are using our resources to fuel their economies and their countries, and they are still telling us we should get a grip. So, no, I don't think uh, Africans have any reason to be inferior, but I think they are being made to feel inferior to keep them down. This is my impression. Thank you very much, Ronke. And uh, I must say the thoughts are, are becoming very um, strongly put across and it's good it's good this is a, a truth interviews and we are expected to be frank with ourselves in the most decent manner as possible so i think there are many points of of, of convergence between your points and arena's points uh maybe the of course perception has a part to play in it the point is we don't have to feel inferior to anybody else in the world and we can choose to or not to express ourselves um um, well, I say ex extravagantly in our own traditional ways or otherwise, but internally we have to understand that we do have a contribution to the, make to the world. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a breather and kind of like cool off a bit with a short video. And when I come back, we'll be, uh, we'll be hearing from Shadrach and from other people on the panel. Thank you very much. Just one minute. To Everybody to the dance floor. <laughs> This is a dangerous group. This is a group that we're dealing with them. Come on, we go to the big yo. Fillers, you know as well, we're SOL, so we be the illers. With the mic in our hands, we feel like Moses taking y'all up to the promised land. We come through strictly, strictly giving us grateful. All right, thank you very much for taking that breather. Uh, if you are joining us from the audience, I'd like to acknowledge James. I mentioned some of the countries joining us. James posted that he joined in from Canada. Thank you for joining in from Canada. And thank you for every other person 
uh, who is on the call today. If you have a question, contribution, feel free to post it on our channels, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn. We're all available online. All right, so we're going to go to Mr. Kubiani, and we're going to ask Mr. Kubiani to talk to us about inferiority complex. Is there a reason for it, and what can we do about it? Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you kindly. I wear, I wear multiple hats, but the two that are going to be uh, coming through as I speak around the inferiority, inferiority complex or the need to not be apologetic, those two heads are going to be my blockchain leadership and, of course, me being an entrepreneur. Why, why, why do I touch on those two heads as I lean forward to put a bit of background? Our identity as Africans finds its expression in trade. Our identity finds its expression in deal making. What do I mean? Some of you might have heard about the scenario of the second-hand car salesman, whereby if I want to sell my second-hand or pre-owned car to the dealership, then, then the second-hand car salesman who is shrewd, who is shrewd, will take pen and paper and walk around the car with me, and they will be pointing a hundred, if not a thousand faults that exist with that car or on that car or there's a dent here there's a chip over there the, the engine sound I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling the love so there'll be a whole lot of perhaps exaggerated defects in that car what is the purpose what is what is he or she doing she she or he is in the process of devaluing the car value so that it can be acquired from me for this much and then put up on the market for that much. You know, it's a very simple analogy, a very simple story, but that's what's happening to Africa's raw materials because uh, the, the, the Ethiopia is the cattle capital of the continent with 57 million cattle. But what do the leather goods traders do when they reach Ethiopia? Those middlemen, they go like, listen, you're going to throw away this cowhide. What are you doing with it? You don't need it. Eh, I'm going to put on, I think the Italians, they say, shut up your face. Shut up your face. You don't need this. So give it to me. You're about to throw it away. And then that's how the value chain of the lead of the luxury uh, goods industry begin in the bags and the shoes. And then fast forward 80 steps later, that same leather uh, 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 skin that was about to be thrown away by an Ethiopian farmer, it has now been transformed into a luxury, how do I say this, Louis Vuitton uh, bag, Gucci, and all these uh, Western-based uh, manufacturing uh, wonders, if I can put it that way. Then it comes back to Africa. That one bag, I mean, I mean one cow makes four bags, and then those, that one bag requires 60 to 80 cattle in Africa to acquire them. You see now, it was like, wait a minute, is there magic in the value chain? So I think I'm, I'm helping Africans and I'm also helping our global peers. Our identity finds expression in global trade. What does that mean? When I arrive in Italy, when I land in the US and they ask me, uh, what is the reason, for, what is the purpose of your visit? I need to be unflinching when I answer exactly why I'm there. I shouldn't apologize. If I apologize, then it means there's something skewed in my identity. Oh, please let me in. Uh, I mean, really, this is me. I'm African. No begging. If I bring value to the table, then I deserve to be in Italy. Actually, Italy needs to celebrate me. Then, then the U.S. must celebrate me because I bring value. So I circle back. Our identity, no, no manga manga business, no messing around. Our identity finds expression in, in global trade. Let me give another example. I, I know that um, one of the speakers, I think it's EJ, who touched on this about women finding, or oh, not women, all of us in our looks. I am heartbroken how many deals I've had to walk away from because the person bringing the deal to the boardroom was a woman. And what did she do with her identity? 
she actually wore a mini skirt and she kept flicking her hair in the boardroom and she kept she kept doing something to her lips and i go like oh no 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 this is the boardroom not the bedroom so the bedroom i'm not involved <laughs> This is the boardroom. So okay. I'm not broken when uh, even sometimes women sit on panels. Look, I'm not throwing stones at women. I, my own wife is a co-founder with me in the company, so I respect women. But you see a woman come and sit on a panel and she sits like this and she's showing. I go like, no, 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 no. Boardroom, not bedroom. So if our identity is skewed, we will either apologize, we will either flat, we will either bring other qualities in the business trade in state of value. You get paid based on value, full stop. Last but not least, I've got friends in Ghana, a number of them. One of them shared a story with me of how Ghanaian businessmen, they sometimes travel with laptops. I know some of you here might, might be aware what laptops are. Laptops in that in that uh, uh, street language is when a woman is taken almost like a carry luggage, like come and travel with me. It's almost like a, 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 a an office wife. It's, it's not a wife. It's almost like a, a fling, like, or oh, travel with me. I want to entertain myself while I'm going to Dubai. That is nonsense. What is that saying? The, the Mercedes Benz driving black man in Africa is forgetting that it was Bertha Benz, who was a woman who first drove the first Mercedes. And now he's now using that as a tool, as an economic tool to force an imbalance, to tell a woman, listen, you are not worthy unless you come with me, not as a business partner, but as a laptop, something that is inferior. So on that, on that point, I'm saying, let's be careful what finds expression in global trade. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. So we're going to hear on that same topic again from, from Ijeoma because uh, we're, we're running on time. So we'll just try to manage it as much as possible to deliver on the points that we're making today. Ijeoma, you have a floor, please. Your sound again, please. Okay, so... The question is, do, do I think that Africans typically feel inferior to other civilizations? And what can we do about that? All right. It's, it's actually both ways, and, and I, I will explain. First of all, a portion of us actually feel very okay, confident enough to engage and interact, just like M. Shadrach just talked, talked about um, the global trade in the boardroom and all of those kind of settings, beautiful. But another chunk of us actually feel that somehow in our subconscious, there is that thought. I said it earlier, and I want to reject that point, that some, somebody who is not an African or a Western person's ideology or ideas about things is superior to us. I've seen that play out in the work setting. In my, my husband works in the oil and gas space. And you know, at some point, they had to start doing something called local content. And I was very happy. Because there was this ideology, you know, if you hand over anything to a, um, a Nigerian or an African person, they will mess it up. No, this is the narrative that we have accepted based on, uh, on how we are perceived. And then we have internalized it, put it in our subconscious, and it is becoming our reality. And we are thinking that that is how we truly are. We have credible professionals, Africans, men and women who are doing things everywhere in the world. And so there is no need to start feeling that, oh, these other people's ideas, it's not a fight, are better than us. And there is, um, um, there is something Dr. Ronke said about, um, there's something she said about being okay with who you are and everybody's a human being. Humanity is just humanity. We are just one race. And we all have ideas. We all have, as in, we are all blessed with creative thinking and innovative thinking such that we are able to bring something to the table wherever we find ourselves. But I will also want to point this thing, the fact that we, the, the colonial mentality and passing on from one generation to the other, like I said, I'm not going to play this as um, that we are victims. No, I'm not going to play that, that today. It has been passed on to us and this is where we have to be careful what we, what we tell our children, what we say to them, how we make them feel, what they see us do, what they hear us say. Because it is how we interpret the world that they will also mm. interpret the world. If they see that we are unable to push 
push out our ideas, if they see that we behave in a certain manner when we find some people, if they hear our comments when we watch television and some things are projected about Africa, and by the way, and I, I also love what Dr. Ronke said, please, we're not very needy people who need, we are constantly in need of something, help from all over the world. This help mentality, always dumping things to us, has also made a certain number of us feel that we are inferior, whether we like it or yes, that is a fact. And that is, and it is something we have to really deal with. There is nothing wrong with an African person. Your brain is intact. The same <laughs> brain that everybody has is the one that we have. There is nothing wrong yeah. with it. If, if there is something I truly want to achieve today is to say that wherever you are as a human being, African, Asian, whatever, you are a human being. And we have to understand. We don't have to educate you. We, you have to understand that everybody has something to bring to the table. We don't have to tell you that an African person has something in their brain. You need to know that they have it. And for us Africans, please, believe in yourself. You are not inferior. You are powerful the way you are. You have ideas. You have things to contribute. You have all, so much inside of you that you have to, to give to the world. We have things that we need to export. I don't know whether we have, we've gotten to that point yet, but there are lots of things that we can give to the world. And nothing should ever, for any reason, make us inferior. And please, from today henceforth, let's pass on to our children that they are all right. The way they are, they are okay. Let, let them be able to sit down and think for themselves. Let them be able to speak. Speak into their situations. Yes, we know that we always think that this, this, that. They've made us, they projected that their skin is that. They say, that is their business. What are you thinking about yourself? Nobody can su succeed in life beyond their mindset and how they have constructed how they think, how they feel, and what they do. And if you're an African from today henceforth, never feel in philos with any particular civilization. You are mm. okay. What you have to bring is massive. And just to end on this note, there are lots of Africans that have contributed to the development and innovation of so many things in the world. I don't, I don't even want to begin to mention names up to the vaccine that we are using to fight coronavirus. I know that we have been exploited. I know that we have been taken advantage of. I know that everything is being dumped on us. Today, seize, seize all the dumping. Begin to patronize your local content. Look for the things within the African system. Buy local. I want to give this practical example. Why will an, a, a shoemaker in a place in Aba, I want to give an give example with Nigeria because I love to paint pictures. How can you make quality shoes? Kenneth understands what I'm saying and, and the few of us that are here. They make very good quality shoes, very good quality bags. And let me shock you, our viewers. Do you know what they write in it sometimes? Made in Italy. For what? Made in Germany. Made in Spain. Why? What is that? For what reason? Abba is a city. Thank you for putting that. Abba is a city in eastern Nigeria. These guys are the most enterprising human beings I've ever come across. No jokes. But how we do not put that? But now they are beginning to understand that we are beginning to empower them gradually. We will get to that. How can what are the next steps? They're beginning to understand that what they have, the world needs it. If you wear a what I call palm slippers made by Anabama, you wear it for long. Now they are beginning to put it made in Aba, Nigeria. And I'm super proud. End to the inferiority complex. You are okay the way you are, and you have something to bring to the table. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jamal Kandu. Much beautiful thoughts the beautiful thoughts thank you so much uh we we are almost out of time and uh, dr ronke babajide may have to leave to join another meeting but we'll crave your indulgence to give us another 10 minutes to deal with the last question and because she's leaving i'm going to give her uh before i'm going to call up faith later but because she's leaving i'm going to give her the opportunity to talk about the practically and later on i'll come back to uh Ms. Arena as well because of some thoughts i'm seeing on the private chat but I want you to talk to us about um, um, some of the things Africa is giving to the world. A aside from the rhetoric, the motivational speech that we're giving ourselves right now, practically speaking, what do we have to bring to the table to the rest of the world? Uh, Dr. Ronke, please take that to start with. Yes, thank you. Thank you uh, for, for giving me this 10 minutes before I have to leave. So um, I think Ijeoma already made a lot of very, very good points. So regarding goods and services that are made in Africa, there are so many things that people don't seem to be aware of. And maybe, unfortunately, as she described, some of them are using European labels or European um, cities and places to 
give their goods more value for no good reason, actually. So I have actually compiled a couple of examples that I personally like a lot of. Uh, one of them, if you see the picture behind me on the wall, is from a Nigerian gallery where I regularly, um, I don't, ah, yes, maybe you can see it now, these women in the background. There's this Nigerian gallery and they have an online site where you can order art. So one of the things I want to talk about is African art. There's so much beautiful African art, um, and I'm not talking about the stuff that you are seeing in the tourist markets where they, they sell you cheap stuff from, from possibly China, I think. But um, I'm talking about our traditional arts and values, which are beautiful, and I can only recommend that you give them a look. I'm going to paste the link in the, um, in the chat so you can also maybe... Um, solicit their business because i'm i have bought lots of pictures from them there are different artists they um that they they sell that's one thing art then there's of course music may i i assume that you have all seen burner boy at the 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 music awards um so there's a lot of african music has always influenced um, the whole world african music but I don't want to, to just remain with you know, creativity because that's something we have been marginalized around a lot of times. So yes, Africa make music, Africa make art and they can dance and all these things, which is true, but this is not the only thing. Another thing I would like to talk about, which we're contributing is of course um, also goods. So um, Ijeoma touched on the shoes that are, that are being made in Awa. I'm going to post another link into the uh, chat because there's uh, another company that I would like to promote, and that's the lady makers. So um, Chiminanda Adichie, she's wearing their clothes, for example. She's wearing them when she's going to um, award ceremonies. She's wearing them when she's uh, going to press conferences because she understands the necessity to show the world what Africa actually has in terms of their own um, clothes, their own brands and all these. So this is something I want to, to um, also promote here, our own type of, of clothes and, and shoes and all these things. And then, and I think that is the most important. I think we undervalue the intelligence that is Africa. If you look at scientists in, and one problem that I actually see, and I think this is something we should have as one of our next discussion is the brain drain. All our good people are going to the West. We have all these amazing scholars, scientists who are now in, in, uh, in the USA or in the UK and they're contributing to the economies there because they didn't uh, find a place uh, to, to actually do it here or in Africa. I can't even say here because I'm currently not in Nigeria. But um, so I think we contribute a lot to the world. But what we are mostly contributing is our intelligence, our resources. Let's not forget about the fact that our resources um, are running most of the world. There's the oil, there is the minerals, there's all these things that we are contributing to the world. And I think we should be selling them at a higher price. Because I, I like what Shadrach talked about earlier about the way things suddenly change value when you take them, like the leather story with the cows and when it comes back at his, as a bag, that you pay much more money the, um, for it. And um, I think that's one of the issues. I mean, we talked about this in one of the earlier truth interviews, the fact that our resources are exported and then we have to re-import um, the processed goods at a much higher price. We should look at that. We are contributing a lot. We are in contributing intelligence to the world. We are contributing science. We are contributing art. We're contributing books. Look at Jimmy Manda, for example. Look at her books. They are worldwide bestsellers. So there is thought leadership that we actually have. We are um, leading in, in terms of music nowadays. Just Look, we have to see this because there's a narrative around what Africa is contributing and we're made to feel that we're not. But this is not true. The fact is that this is something they're telling us. They keep repeating it and repeating it to make us devalue the stuff that we are bringing to the world. And we, this has to change. And I just want to re-emphasize that. I know that Reiner was not trying to, to make derogative remarks, but he has he's also furthering this mindset with this uh, stuff that he's telling us. It is, uh, there's nothing wrong with our culture, there's nothing wrong with our mindset, there's nothing wrong with our intelligence. It's just that people are um, trying to get the best out of Africa by as cheap as possible. And they can achieve that by making us feel that what we have is not worth anything. 
And we right. have to change that, uh, that narrative, I think. So thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you so much. It's, uh, it's, it's deep. It's getting deeper and deeper. And uh, I want to appreciate everyone for that. Uh, we're going to take uh, maybe a, another uh, 15 minutes and then we'll close out. But let's thrash on this a bit. Katun made a, a statement that there is a reason why the local artisan will want to use a foreign country's label on his product. It's good to find that reason and address it. Some of us Africans prefer foreign goods. So that brings us to the point of our appetite. So I'm going to call on uh, Faith Mobia to share his points on the previous question and also try to maybe touch on this a bit. Faith? Thank you very much, Kenneth. Um, beautiful, awesome, engaging discussion going on. And I, and I also enjoyed the, you know, this is a truth interview series and um, we need to be truthful to ourselves here. Thank you, Rena. Thank you, Dr. Ronke. Your views, they, they are needed in this discussion because it gives us um, a clearer view, you know, to understand what needs to be done, you know, for Africa. You know, there is something that is usually um, a common um, idiom. Until, until the lion learns how to tell the story, um, the hunter will always be the hero. Um, I need to speak on this. One of the reasons why it appears that um, Africa, um, Africa is seen not to, to end the value that it requires or that it needs. You know, my brother Shedrach mentioned something that when someone delivers a value, it shouldn't just be a question of color or where you're from. If I'm an African and I have brought value, that is what matters right now it is also important that as we deliver this value okay as we go ahead to 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 add value right we also need to tell the story ourselves that see we have done this and this and this so we need to change the narrative tell our stories ourselves. It's not a question of the hunter coming to say he's the hero all the time. We don't know what happened between, between the hunter and the, and the lion in the bush. So it's only what the hunter tells us that we believe. So um, okay. I understand why I understand why Dr. Ruke was um, a bit agitated when she wanted to defend Africa in the light of what Rena was saying, where Rena was trying to explain the, gener the generational thinking the ESO economy and the Jacob economy, which we can talk about when we want to talk about it. Um, people that think about short term, people that think about long term, it is everywhere, whether in Africa or in Europe. There are Germans that think short term, there are Africans that think short term, there are Africans that think long term, there are Germans that think long term. So it is not um, a regional thing. It is a, natural, it's a human factor. So it's a human factor. It has nothing to do with where you're from. And, and I think... That is what uh, Dr. Rinko was trying to normalize, all right? Um, from what Rena was um, trying to say, that this thinking is not because I'm an African, that's why I'm thinking like that. It's actually because of my understanding of the, of the world I am in and, and the belief system, the, the, the makeup, what, what I believe to be important that will make me to think short term and then think long term. So that is that. Quickly, I want to talk about trade. Um, Brother Shadrach mentioned something about trade and the value, you know, relating it back. And somebody mentioned about Aba. Um, Aba brought up home base Aba. So I pass area all the time I move from Portaco to my hometown. Aba is my hometown. I'm born and bred in Aba. Osioma is a local government in Aba. And, and the area market is, is we are sharing, we are sharing the area market international market with with Osioma and Abanot. so this this is my home now let me let me let me let me shock you people with um something i'm going to read from um just a quick one about uh, about area market and the impact of Abba. let me just quickly say how Abba shoe industry can harness the potentials of afc fta that is africa free trade agreement. He said that Aba itself, which is the Ariara International Market, 
has the capacity to bring in up to 2.6 trillion dollars as in uh, this figure i'm reading from a report okay and uh, we are we are talking about the impact that this can have all right but the question just as ijama was asking why would somebody produce see all the product you see what i'm wearing that is a bar that is this is this is what we do all right but now now we are not talking about we're not talking about why would somebody make i don't wear i don't wear foreign made shoes all my shoes are home are handmade shoes by my brothers and sisters designed right now now the question is why would they produce and label it italian and somebody made the made, made a point in, in in one of the um part, uh, one of the participants um dropped a comment he said because people will not value it so you now find a situation whereby we do not value ourselves and the German did say something he said you need to know that you are created the way you're created for a reason you need to discover your purpose in life what is your purpose why are you here if you don't know your purpose in life and where you are deposited where you are deposited you will not make an impact you don't have to i don't have to have a white skin to go and make a good deal like my brother Shedak said in 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 with 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 uh, with in, in any part of the world i can sit anybody down and make a deal i can talk about anything to anybody it doesn't matter my skin color so if you're looking at my skin color that is your loss all right so it it has nothing to do with so that is why i said our identity as much as we know that globally that is uh, understanding of what africa is how are we telling our own story how are we bringing our value out we need to change the narrative we need to let ourselves project ourselves in the right sense we need to bring ourselves where we are because see there are a whole lot of things good to see i don't write any negative thing about africa i am i am i'm an I, I, I use my linkedin to 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 pass message okay um across my over over eighty thousand followers on linkedin I don't write any negative thing about Africa because Rena will not write any negative thing about German. He will write something positive about it. Rena, that is the truth. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't project Africa in the negatives. I, I, I pick the good ones and sell because it's what you sell that people will buy. What are you branding yourself as? So we, ne we need to start the right branding. The African brand mm. is in our hands to recreate and it is in the hand of the young people just as we have this opportunity yeah. and then we are also doing something in our own right through some movement that we've come up to rebrand africa using our voices so um that this is about the previous question right um so moving 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 forward to uh, understand how you uh, don't know whether i should pause here then you can take it off from there and then i can come back if okay, is, you can, if, you can if just I need to continue, a, a, you tell me. A few more 30 seconds, you know, 30 seconds more, sir, but so that because of the time. Go ahead, sir. Oh, okay, okay. If I can also make it one uh, one minute, one minute. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So to, to touch light more on this, now uh, about inferiority complex, all right? And and why, why it is so, and why we should look at, why do we have issues of inferiority complex the question the answer is let me let me be frank and and some most speakers have also said it see there is a mentality already in africa mm. average african youth think think that white skin is better it, it, that so my brain makeup is see if if that is if i open my body if i open my flesh red blood will come out if rena opens his body red blood will come out it is not white blood it's not black blood we are <laughs> one human being we are we are one people we are just one so that is the way i carry myself i carry myself with this understanding that see the bloodstream that runs in you is right mine is red we are one so it's because of location over years that i've changed these colors 
I don't know the color of God. I don't know the color of I don't know the color of God. So uh, um so it could be black, it could be white, it could be in between. So I don't care. But what I'm what I'm what matters to me is that I am created to be in Africa because Africa needs me to become great. So Africa needs every young person to become great. So if we begin to understand who we are, all right, it makes a lot more easier for us to build a good brand and then not take a second place a second place all the time you know mm -hmm. there is no need to think and um, to think uh, because i'm an african then uh, i'm not going to be see most times um if you might mention, mention about local content local content you you come to africa and then you introduce local content local content is because we have we have failed in the in, in, in trying to understand where we are there's nothing like local content this is us so it, it's 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 we should we should take charge <laughs> we should take charge. So local content is just like giving us, uh, you know, give us some fish. You know, just hold this one, hold this one, and be calm and be fine. No, no. See, we are taking charge. I don't mm. see, I don't see the crop of people here as people that will sit and be looking for local content. We will give foreign content. We will be the one to give the foreign content, not local content. We will give you foreign content. Hey, guy, hold this one because this is ours. So it's. It's, it's a question of how you perceive yourself and how you project mm. yourself. So thank you very much. Um, kindly, as I lean back to allow thank the you conversation to continue. Thank you. Beautiful. All right. So we are way past our time. Uh, I'm just going to give the floor to, uh, to the internal audience in, in the sequence to say a few words about the entire topic and maybe one or two thoughts. Uh, may I start from Anne? Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for letting uh, me be a part of this, um, Indian and Malaysian, but as Shadrach said, my heart beats for Africa. Uh, I think I'll only pick one point, and that's this notion of Africa as a continent and compare it to India as a subcontinent. And in a way, I found it very interesting to try and find parallels between the both and how we can actually do that. And so the one point I'd like to end with is when India was looking for a national anthem, something that would unite also very diverse cultures, languages, and people, there was a wonderful poet called Rabindranath Tagore, and he created a national anthem with what all Indians could share, and it was the mountains, the rivers, the, the natural beauty. And when I listen to this song now, I thought how wise it is to find something that everyone in that subcontinent would say, this is ours. And so this is my great wish for you know, these discussions around Africa, is look for those values that unite you uh, and that you can all be proud of and raise up as Africa and build on that foundation and then deal with the differences. So that's what I have Beautiful. to say. Thank you lovely, very much. Lovely. Always spoken, always speaking so peacefully, so gently, so nicely. Thank you, Anne, for that. All right, so let's hear from uh, Nduka. Nduka is joining us for the first time, so I I'm sure he has brilliant thoughts for us today. Go ahead, sir. Hi, okay. Um, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I, I really enjoyed this. And um, Faith, thank you for your contributions. Uh, Ijoma, same, Dr. Ronke, who's left, and also... Um, uh, our friend uh, from Germany, I think Raina right. Raina. Good. I just want to say one thing, and um, just a quick thought. We we have always lived by a template as Africans, and that template wasn't the template we created for ourselves. Uh, it's a template that um, that was handed over to us by um, the colonial masters. And I think the time is up for that template. We need to shred that template throw it in the bin and begin to explore we as ourselves, internally and externally. Intrinsically and uh, extrinsically, as I will say, there are templates that have been handed over to us by our forefathers, our ancestors, and all we need to do is modernize these templates, ensure these templates uh, 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 reflect what the world is talking about today and not live by the white man's template. 
it is giving us problems. If we continue to live by those templates, we will never find our identity. We will never use our identity properly. And I just want to thank uh, Ken for this platform. I, I will continue to join now from, from, from today and um, ensure that I contribute. Time is up. I don't want to spend uh, too much talking, but we need to recreate our templates. We need to recreate the values we live by. We need to recreate mm -hmm. our identity. We need to recreate everything that we as Africans live by. I, I, I want to make one point that whenever I travel out of the shores of Africa to maybe Europe or the Americas, when I speak like an African, I make more friends than I do when I try to say water. I went into a store one day and the lady kept saying water. I said, um, no, water. I want to no, buy water. 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 I said, I want to buy water. And, and, water. and, and, and my, my wife said, my, my wife kept pinching me. I said, she won't understand you. I said, she will understand this one. When water. I come from Africa to this place, it is water. It is yeah. not water. So please, we need to start changing that template. We need to throw it out and get a new template to live by. And our leaders will not help us because our leaders are leaving, leading, leaving and leading by the template handed over to them by the, the so-called colonial masters. We need to create our template. And with forums like this, we will ensure these templates reach the entire world. Thank you very much. I hope to see you, you see, see, see everyone on the next uh, the next uh, <laughs> Thank you very the, the, much. The, right, you thank know, you. when he, when he said water versus water, I remember the narrative of an evil. She was on TEDx and she she said uh, her her daughter had a problem because her classmates couldn't pronounce her evil name. So she was asking for an English name so to make it easier for them. Then she said, well, "Look, if somebody is Russian and you know in Russian or some languages of Eastern Europe." You have probably three three um, consonants, or you know, in sequence, and they are difficult to pronounce. Do they have to change their name to be acceptable? No. If if they don't have to, no then way. nobody has needs to change their name. Everybody needs to learn how to pronounce, whether it's Japanese or Arabic or Eastern European or African. Thank you beautifully for that. I would like to take uh, last uh, your contribution, uh, Reina, and then any last words for this session. If you could please uh, step forward on that, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> I was thinking I'm something like the um, the advocate of the <laughs> devil. So no, no, no. means no, no, no. It's a good uh, position. I like this. Um, and my fear is always we discussed a lot of things and everything on the end, everything is nice and we love all each other and um, and we have a lot of potential and possibilities and so on but when we, when we go out in africa we see the reality and i my fear is that we are always talking like people in the ivory tower so mm. uh, what is the situation in reality the, re the reality situation is that the part of uh, world trading of africa is two percent mm. that is is the reality the second reality is that um, the, the cow skins coming from Ethiopia, the reason is you cannot find cow skins uh, out of Ethiopia without scratch in the, in the skin. This is very important for luxury uh, leather uh, products like, like uh, bags or uh, car chairs and so forth. You have to find um, uh, cows with they are not guarded with uh, with wires. Uh? So and this is the reason. And the reason is you can find also these skins in in Europe, and you have to f in special place. But the price is three to four times higher. That is the reason for the Italians. So you have a special product you cannot find in a big scale as out of Ethiopia. The reason is they are they are not guarded in, 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 in blocks. So, but I don't understand why the Ethiopians say, okay, take the cows, take the skins, everything. So this is the reality. And um, on the end, go out, see what is really happened. And I can say, I'm a, f I'm a fan of Africa 
the, the reason is there are I like the people they are re really kindly I like the the, the 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 jungle everything but in reality today Africa is not competitive this is what it is thank you very much thank you very much so uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll make some comments on that too but I would just like to bring on Shadrach to also speak uh, on that and then last words uh, thank you kindly. Appreciate it. I'm going to, on a parting note, I'm going to pe uh, paint a picture. It's actually something that Raina referred to earlier in the week on the other platform, uh, LinkedIn. I mean, on the timeline, rather. Yeah. So he referred to, uh, he reposted a photo of his daughter. Wonderful. She was 27 at the time, and she was commandeering or steering this gigantic harvester. A very inspiring photo that gave me goosebumps delighted me and he even said he put out a, a positive message to say girls all over you can make it and it got me thinking because i followed that i followed that to even last year that's when i came face to face with bertha benz uh, for 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 those that may not be aware that is the late carl benz's wife and, 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 and of course, Carl Benz gifted the world from Germany with the first uh, automobile, Mercedes. That's 1888, when she steered it across, across uh, the land, I think for about 103 kilometers. Why is that important when I'm making my parting remarks? They accused her in the villages across the land of being a witch. And in the process, she, she, she was jeered at and criticized. But why they accused her of being a witch? Because... Her carriage did not have, her horse cart did not have horses. And here is the point. We, we hosted, and I think he's, he's on his way out now, a delegation from France with His Excellency, the President of France, this past two weeks, who also uh, made his way through East Africa. And one of the points that uh, President Kagame in the forums that I'm privileged to be part of, President Kagame said, it is high time from an identity perspective. It is high time that African heads of state, and also to the point of Henry Nduka, African heads of state stop running to France to go and borrow a template on how to run the African nations. Because uh, we, uh, African heads of state, they run to France, they run to Beijing, they run to Russia, one with a begging bowl of give us the insights, give us the leadership. And then they also say, give us the foreign aid. That is sick at a leadership level. Somebody said the fish rots from the head. So we need to get our identity resolution at the political head we, we need to see our politicians demonstrating the Africa we want, the Africa where they are, the politicians are more leaders more than they are politicking. Why am I saying that? It's possible to have a doctor who's a brilliant medical doctor, but he can't run a hospital. So let's not confuse a doctor with a leader. A doctor is a doctor is a doctor, but a leader is a different breed of human being and has got different skill sets. So our politicians need to demonstrate more leadership and less drama, number one. Number two, mm. we need to, as Africans, uh, uh, Dr. Ronke touched on the brain drain, we need, as Africans, to produce less graduates that are availing their skill to the open market and say hire me we need to produce graduates and non-graduates that are saying i will create the jobs i will be more a creator than an employee so we need africa's silicon valleys to arise it's about time otherwise as Rainer said we will always be insignificant in our global trade so those are the key elements. We need to fix our leadership. Uh, and and in, in my family, we've got a family constitution. Whatever deal that I make in the open industry always has to speak to our family constitution, has to speak to our family value, our family vision. So African family units, you've been shaken up, you've been rattled. Let's fix Africa at a family unit and then at the villages. Because somebody said recently, all the crooked politicians, they once lived in a village. So let's fix the family and let's fix the village. Then we can redress the city. 
those are my parting uh, remarks. Let's be unapologetic. Let's become more leaders. Thank you kindly. Thank you very much, Shadrach. Uh, beautiful thoughts there, and beautiful concluding thoughts on action points. And earlier we mentioned the action points of um, earlier we mentioned the action points of embracing. Well, now I'm afraid to call it local content, but the point is embracing stuff made in our localities, whether we're Africans or Indians or Asians or Europeans, we should have some level of respect for what is made where we are. And then we can improve it from whatever comes elsewhere. And um, yeah, Mr. Kenneth, uh, just one yes, last Mr. point, apologies. The reason yes. why I mentioned Bertha Benz is, is actually a point I wanted to make to our leadership in Africa, my apologies. I gave the background, but I didn't deliver the point. Here's the point. And Reina is big on solutions. Here's the solution. Yeah. I, I salute him for that. Our, our, our horse carriage for 400 years and after has always been pulled by horses. Maybe you're wondering, what horse carriage am I talking about? Just like how a Bertha Benz left the horses at home and drove across the land without the horses, our horses need to be left behind. What horses am I talking about? China needs to stop pulling our carriage. <laughs> Europe needs to stop pulling yeah. our carriage. US, you must keep your horses. We must combust our engines, combust our trade. We must fix Africa in Africa. Then US can be an option. Then Germany can be an option, not the only option. So we, it's time to send our horses back and then combust our own engines just like Bertha, who brought us German precision. It's time for African precision. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. That's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. So if you're watching us from, uh, from Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and you are doing something original, you're doing, well, maybe not original, but you're doing something locally, producing stuff with raw materials made in Africa, and you want people to know about it, I'd like you to post it in the comments tell us about what you're doing and let us know that it is i mean it is made here and it's good enough to sell to the world and we're now going to hear from mrs ijoma ukandu her closing thoughts and her thoughts on this final question the sound okay uh, my thoughts on the final question about what what we can export and what we can yeah. promote exactly am i correct ken precisely precisely all right so just to add to some of the points that dr ronke um spoke about interestingly i, I would like to start this way we can actually export our family values i mean it might come strange to someone somebody will be like oh ij how will family values translate to money and all of those kind of things and i'd love to start this way we live where we are a, a, we're majorly a collectivist set of people. We're a communal set of people. We love family, we love relationships, we love interactions. And if you notice what is going on in the world, the world is heavily driving towards individualism. I mean, I'm not saying this one is better than this honorable. The fact that we can survive together by ourselves is something every other part of the world cherishes about Africa, but we don't even consider it as something we should cherish and continue to promote. Please, let's not drain that voice and start to welcome things that will not help us in the long run. We need a family unit. We need our values. We need our systems, the way we respect one another, value one another, our elders, our family ties, our cousins, all those relationships. They are very important in the survival of human beings in this world. And we should never for any reason lose it because the thing that we want to lose is something the world is celebrating about us. And we need to make sure that we don't lose it, lose it. and we pass it on to the next generation because the world can use it. Look at, look at the coronavirus pandemic. Look at, everybody stayed at home. But Nigerians or maybe Africans made sure of it that they were, if you notice, they were majorly happy people. Not saying that we don't suffer, we don't have our issues, but you notice that we're able to thrive. We are very resilient. We are very okay. We know how to interact with one another. We still kept those ties and we're able to survive and thrive. So it's important we understand that our family values is one of our strongest points as Africans. And it's important we retain it and we continue to export it to the world. It might not give us monetary uh, values, 
but they are tangible, intangible things that, that the world can use to survive. Secondly, I want to talk about the movie industry. We can export our movies. I love what we're doing now. I love the fact that we're becoming very proud to whether Ghana, South Africa, Egypt, Kenya, Uganda, Nigeria, we're beginning to be proud of what we do in terms of our movies. We don't need to, initially, sometimes I noticed that we might want to borrow ideas of a particular movie that have been set in the Western world and the civilized society, and we now want to retell it exactly the way it is as Africans. No, don't retell. Export our own stories. We have our unique stories. We have our unique culture. We have our unique values. Export our stories. Export our culture. Export it in our movies. And people celebrate it. I have friends all over around me that are not Africans. They love watching our movies. They find it entertaining. And we need to start promoting them. But in order for all these things, because I don't want to touch on clothing, fashion, dressing, and all of those things, I think um, Dr. Ronke has touched on all those things. And like with music. How about tourism? How about promoting it? How about being okay? How about us moving, moving around our own spaces in Africa? Not necessarily a month that we must go to Dubai. Or we must, I mean, those places are lovely. Go when you, when you want to go. But do we know that we have very lovely places in African continent that we can visit as individuals and patronize and increase our revenue? Very important, our tourism. And our food. I said it, Ellen, I want to repeat. Our jollof rice is amazing. Let's get it on, on the international cuisine level. Let's get it there. Let's package our delivery. And in order for us to achieve all these things, I want to make a very salient point for us to be celebrated since we're looking for action points. Wherever you find yourself, whatever you find yourself doing, please deliver it with every sense of excellence. Every sense of excellence. Let's strive for excellence at the individual level because we are talking about um, leadership, politicians and all, but at the individual level, what should be our takeaway? Let's start with striving for excellence. Deal with people with integrity wherever you find yourself. Do things honestly. As an African person, deal with people honestly. It's very important. Number three, retain your family values, pass it down to your children. Make sure that they know who they are and they embrace themselves. They don't look at themselves as inferior people. They are okay the way they are. There is a reason why they are planted where they are planted. There's a reason why they are not Americans. There is a reason why they are not Europeans. There's a reason why they're not even Asians. And the thing I love about Asians is that wherever they find themselves, I said it even for the Italians, they retain who they are, their identity, why giving value to the people that they are giving value to wherever they find themselves in the world. Why shouldn't we? Let me put it this way. I'm not saying I'm all those kind of activists, enough is enough, but I will say it. Enough is enough for this kind of mentality. It has to stop. I mean, zero tolerance for unnecessary things that make us feel inferior. We are okay. Number three, we need to get our leadership right. If you find yourself in a leadership position, please use it wisely. My John Maxwell mentor will always say, leadership is influence. I don't understand why we will have leaders that will leave the shores of Africa and go to European countries to seek for medical help. How does that even explain your leadership? How does that explain who you are? If you're a leader in a particular country, whether politically or otherwise, and you want to go somewhere else to fix your health problem, that tells you that the health problem, the health institution in your own country needs to be fixed. And you need to sit and use the resources and fix them. All over Africa, we have resources, mineral resources, whatever resources, we need to sit down, do our things ourselves. The brain drain that we're talking about Make everywhere look interesting. Get it and again, getting our people. Let us sit and fix our continent. It is fixable. And we do not have a problem on and in ourselves. We only have a mindset problem. And we have to shift from that mindset problem to somewhere else. And please, for our kids, I want to end on this note. I'm very big on family. Mm. My name is Ijoma. My second name is Obiano Ju. I don't have an English name. And I love it that my parents did not give me an English name. I mean, I'm so proud of it. I love it. All my children, I give them Igbo names. I'm not saying you must do. But please, let's start understanding that even the way we name our kids and the reason why we do what we do, why we buy what we buy, why we, whatever what we do, be in any place that we, we are in, is a function of how we see ourselves. Let's see ourselves as okay. If I'm introducing myself, I tell you my name is Ijoma, and you don't understand how to pronounce it. I will help you. I will say Ijoma, and you say Ijoma. I will say no, it's not Ijoma. I will, I will smile with you. <laughs> we will laugh together. It's not Ijoma. <laughs> it's, it's Ijoma, and we will take time 
you will pronounce it well. And we are good at it. <laughs> no, no happiness. Yeah. Because I'm also yeah. taking my time to embrace your culture. And wherever I travel to, I'm taking my time to study you, how, how what makes you you. And I try to make sure that I do the things that we make make us live happily. Why not also you Together. take your time to understand my own perspective and see that we are all human beings and we are okay the way we mm -hmm. are. Ubuntu, as it is said in South Africa, we I am because we are. That is why Africa is even surviving to today because we have that communal spirit. May we not lose it to anything at all in this world. We are okay and we are all right. Thank you for this opportunity. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's a beautiful part in note. Uh, we it's it's beautiful when um, you know when you're when you are having a good time, the time runs away so quickly. So I'm not going to keep us together much longer than this. Uh, I'll just uh, say that I want to thank you very much, uh, Mr. Faith Mobia, for joining us today. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank Mr. Reina Togel. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you, uh, Yomal Kandu. Beautiful contributions. Awesome. First time here, but value add. Thank you so much. Thank you once again, Mr. Shadrach Kubiani, Blockchain Baron of Africa. Beautiful. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Henry Nduka, for joining us today. Uh, it's lovely to have you. I look forward to having you on other sessions. Thank you. And for joining us today, beautiful, always here, always committed to us. Bless, uh, God bless you. And thank you, Nana. So I should stand up our video, but I would like to acknowledge you as well. I'm going to end the stream now, and I'd like to once again emphasize that if you're doing anything um, that is locally done, do post it, promote it, and embrace what is in quote local and let's begin to make it global thank you for today we've been talking about embracing our heritage african identity in the modern era god bless you for being there and this recording will be available on, on our channels on facebook on youtube and on linkedin uh if you happen to be viewing it at a later time god bless you and have a great rest of the weekend